Are you as passionate about local governance and municipal issues as I am? Well, then the Cross Border Interviews is your show. We are here to provide you with exclusive insights and thought provoking conversations focusing on municipal matters from across Canada. And now, you have the chance to be part of our incredible journey. By backing our show for as little as $3 per month, you can help us grow and bring more exciting content to your ears. Now, you might be asking yourself, what sets the cross-border interviews apart from other shows? Well, we're not your average show. We dive deep into the unique challenges, successes, and innovative solutions of municipalities from across Canada. We bring you unbiased, unfiltered conversations about municipal issues from coast to coast to coast. By supporting our show, you become an essential part of our mission to amplify the voices of local leaders and shed light on the issues that matter most to our communities. Together, we can foster meaningful change and create stronger, more vibrant communities within our great country. Simply visit our website at crossborderinterviews.ca and show your support today. No matter how small, your contribution makes a significant difference and allows us to continue producing great shows, like the one you're about to hear. Together, let's make municipal issues matter again. Welcome to a very special episode of the Cross Border Interviews. Today marks the beginning of an exciting month-long journey where we delve into the world of small businesses and the vital relationship they share with municipalities they call home. Now, as we embark on this adventure, we're setting out to explore the unique tapestry of Canadian entrepreneurship, shining a spotlight on those brave souls who dare to dream big, the small business owners. Now, over the course of the next four weeks, every Friday, we'll be sitting down with small business owners from different provinces, including Ontario, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and even Nova Scotia, to hear their stories firsthand. As you know, politicians often echo the sentiment that small businesses are the backbones of our communities. But today, we're not just going to listen to the rhetoric. We're going to get down to the nitty gritty and hear directly from those who live and breathe the entrepreneurial spirit. Now, we're going to find out how they perceive that mantra, whether it resonates with their experiences, and how their relationships with the local municipality impacts their businesses. And it's the inaugural episode today of our four-part series. Today, we find ourselves in the picturesque town of Wellington, nestled in the heart of Prince Edward County, Ontario. Here, we have the honor of chatting with a remarkable small business owner, Enid Grace, the owner of Picolinas. Picolinas is not just a local eatery. It's a community hub where delicious cuisine and warm hospitality converge. Enid has been the integral part of Wellington's landscape, contributing not only to the local economy, but also to the vibrant spirit that makes this town so unique. Now, as we sit down with Enid today, we'll uncover the challenges she has faced, the triumphs she has celebrated, and the delicate dance she performs with the municipality to ensure her business thrives. Enid's story represents countless other small businesses across Canada, and we hope that by sharing her experience, we can shed light on the profound impacts local governments can have on nurturing and supporting entrepreneurship. So without further ado, let's dive into the captivating dialogue with Enid Grace, the passionate owner of Picolinas in Wellington, Ontario. So, Enid, I guess I want to start with the big question here is what inspired you to open uh, Authentic Italian uh, Cafe in Wellington, of all places? Because you did, that doesn't scream to me Italian uh, ca uh, Cafe, but for you, I guess it did. Oops. Uh, well, the simplest answer is selfishness. <laughs> Um, so I grew up in Prince Edward County. I grew up in Rednersville, which is just north of Wellington. 
never would have thought in a million years I would have come back there for much reason, but certainly not um, an economic one or as an entrepreneur. Um, but such as life, I did come back there and was um, persuaded to um, look at a old building building in Wellington and um, do something with it um, that needed to be done in Wellington, some sort of food and beverage service that hadn't yet been offered. Wellington was still pretty under service at that point in time. It was at the cusp of things really changing and a large, large hotel, boutique hotel had come in to the area and they were going to start bringing in a, a demographic that needed to be fulfilled outside of, um, you know, picked in or, you know, coming in off the 401 from Trenton being sort of their last options before they hit Wellington. And a lot of the wineries were starting to take, uh, take over mostly in Wellington and Hillier, or certainly most of them in Wellington and Hillier. So I started a smaller cafe um, that was certainly unique for that time. It was a little bit more French skewed, but it certainly wasn't, you know, bacon and eggs or, you know, basic muffins or things. It was a little bit uh, unique and different. And I just sort of started slowly offering really good versions of stuff that people were familiar with, just with a twist and built a reputation and built a clientele. Um, but Wellington really boomed pretty quickly and it was overwhelming for a business of my size at a very small space, but was very successful and really quite popular, luckily very quickly, but it was overwhelming. So my plan was actually to close it and move away. Um, and then members of the community stepped in and were like, well, there's this other building. Maybe you could do something else that was more satisfying. And at that time, a lot of people thought rightfully so that I was going to go back to Italy where I'd spent a lot of time. And so, well, if I'm going to stay, I have to do something Italy based just to suit my own needs. And I'm a marketing person. I have a marketing background. So I thought I had enough of a reputation at that point that people would kind of follow along as long as I kept the service the same, the quality of the product the same, but offered something unique to the community that was still an option for everybody, not just for tourists coming in. Um, because our our demographic of the community changed as well. A lot of people moved in. They weren't just tourists anymore. There was a change in the community. So I just sort of got a little bit ahead of it and really stayed true to the values of traditional Italian service, Italian um, food and beverage, and didn't sway from that to change it into anything more North American. And it worked. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm assuming this just didn't happen over the last year, but it's happened over the last few years. Um, I can imagine starting a new business and even changing from one business, an existing business to a new type of business from French to Italian during the height of a pandemic probably was tough on small businesses like yours. How did you see yourself sort of adapting to the day-to-day -day world that we kind of went through and have you seen, because I know Prince Edward County quite well, There's it is a large tourist market, especially for people all across Canada. Have you seen that tourism drive come back and are you excited for for this coming summer to see sort of the tourists come back and uh, let them explore the fine Italian uh, cuisine that you're going to be offering. So the first part of your question, um, it was difficult, but I would say I was relatively lucky. Um, I had opted to close Enid Grace, which was the original business and open Piccolina about three months before the pandemic started. And really the only setback for me was the renovation process um, and I was lucky that I had family doing a lot of the carpentry and things so we were kind of able to continue on with the renovation because it was just me and my uncles essentially so we were lucky in that sense what changed was the original concept was even more Italian and that people could all sit at a large communal table and we would serve you know Sunday lunch that type of thing that had to go away and what quickly became evident um, as you may or may not know, restaurants, food service has very little margin on what they do. And we didn't want to sacrifice 90% of the product that we made in house. So if we changed our model to more of an Italian mercato or market, still serving the cafe style in the bar, we could service more customers that just needed products to take away from the shop and go home. But they were interesting products. They were, you know, delicious products, whether we imported you know pantry items from Italy or made them ourselves so I'm actually pretty grateful we didn't have 
um, a lot of a negative outcome from the beginning of the pandemic. And I was grateful for that. Um, the Oops. tourists came in droves during the pandemic um, in two ways. Um, a lot of people could only travel so far. So they came to Prince Edward County, even more so than in previous years. But we also, as I mentioned earlier, we had a lot of people permanently decide to reside in Prince Edward County. They'd left their urban life and came uh, came to our community. Um, and going into this year, so we were, I don't want to say overrun because we certainly appreciated from a financial point of view, but that was a lot of people um, during the pandemic for our relatively small community, just in terms of the size and what we were able to um, output. And I'm not just talking about my business, all of the hospitality, there was only so much we could actually produce. Um, this year's a little bit different. This is a different economy than last year. And people are doing different things with their time, with their travel plans, with their money. Um, so we we saw um, a bit of a downward slope, uh, the end of, quote unquote, the season, which would be sort of September, October. Um, and in through where we are even now, considerably different numbers from last, last year. And I think it's, in my opinion, it's mostly economic. Um, so we've had to make a few adaptations on account of that. And as much as, you know, I'm excited for the tourism to come back, I don't actually know what those tourism num numbers are going to look like in comparison to last year. So one of the big things on my show is I like to bring the municipal angle into the, this conversation here for a second. As a small business owner, as a small uh, entrepreneur, how do you see the municipality or the county or the town working with small businesses to a promote tourism, but also promote small businesses like yours. Do you feel like in your community that you're getting that help from the local council or regional councils that uh, you would hope for? Because when people come to your business, they're not just coming to your business, they're spending economic dollars in your community, in your business, but also other uh, uh, businesses as well. Um. I mean, there is some good and then there's some bad. Um, we have some organizations like our tourism organization here in Prince Edward County. You know, they have put forth some um, programs that have certainly been helpful. Um, a lot of it is sort of social media based um, and it's very beautiful and tied together and that's all lovely. Um, so that's helpful. But um won't speak solely for myself, but I'm pretty sure I, I can suggest that others are doing it. We primarily, in terms of marketing for ourselves, primarily use Instagram or other social media formats for our business. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the council, however, is a little <laughs> bit different. Um, I've lived there, I've lived back there long enough to go through a few different councils. And I've also been a, a, a business member of the community in a few different iterations. I worked a little bit on contract through economic development when I first came back and saw how things were starting to kind of not fall apart, but some separations were starting to be formed between people that were encouraging tourism and those that were kind of pushing it away. So that was my first intro in it. Then as a business owner, I think I didn't really notice it so much in the first three years of owning my business because I was a little bit probably naive. I was just trying to get through the day by day as an independent business owner. I didn't have a partner helping me do it. And I was just trying to figure it all out the best as I could with lines up the, out the door, which is not what I was expecting for our little community. Uh, I'm a little older. I'm a little wiser, <laughs> a little more <laughs> impatient um, now. And, you know, there was definitely some things that were offered to us during the pandemic that were helpful. Um, but now that we've come out of it, I think what's happened is our surrounding communities and municipalities, we're seeing my opinion, but there is research to back this up. There's a much more attention being paid to our neighboring communities in terms of bolstering small business, protecting them, encouraging them, letting them know that they are in fact um, an important part of the community and an important part of the municipality and that the council um, you know, supports them thriving. Doesn't necessarily feel that way in Prince Edward County for me. 
Um, that is so, not. So what would you want them to do? So sorry to interrupt. I apologize to interrupt. Yeah, but no what, what's the step that you would want your uh, Prince Edward County to do to sort of help businesses like yours? And I, I know we're talking about the macro issue here of mm -hmm. tourism and small businesses and municipalities. But for you, what would be step one that you would say if council did this tomorrow? Yay for us, because it's going to give us a leg up going into tourism season, whether it be July and August and p potentially part of September. Well, there's, I have two answers. One, I suppose, is probably more emotional, and the other one is more practical. The emotional one would be acknowledge that we are incredibly important to the overall economy here. There is a lot of trickle-down businesses that benefit from everything that we do. And as I mentioned, most of us are doing it on our own. We're paying for all of our own you know, building facade improvements. We're paying for you know, our businesses to look nice inside, outside, all of those types of things, um, because you know, certainly in Wellington, we're not getting the same attention in terms of beautification projects or things like that. Um, and we want the whole community to feel like it is a pleasant place for everyone to come, not just a few business going above and beyond. That's more emotional. On the practical side, get some money for us from government <laughs> programs that already exist. Um, as I mentioned, there's other municipalities around us that have, you know, gone above and beyond getting their hands on I think it's both federal and provincial money that's been offered for beautification programs, small business retainment and um, beautification projects for small business. And to my knowledge, uh, our municipality hasn't engaged in any of that money. And I don't believe I've received any of it in any form or been offered any chance to apply for some of that money. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, myself and a lot of my fellow small business owners, particularly in Wellington, we're using our own money um, to do a lot of these things that the provincial and federal government have offered to help us do. Um, and we're just not seeing it. And if it's available, it's not being, we're not as small business owners in Prince Edward County, we're not being made aware of it. And I think I'm on the pulse of most things. I don't, you know, in, I certainly can't imagine I know everything, but what I don't know, my fellow business owners are, chatting about and are engaging out and this is the first time in a while that I think the majority of us have lost patience like there was sort of this one larger juggernaut issue that smacked us uh, this beginning of the spring where I think it just we were kind of on the tip of the edge and we were just pushed over in terms of sort of aggravation with overregulation and more money being um, requested of us to do things that, quite frankly, our municipality yeah. should be helping us do to make the town look nicer, to be more pedestrian friendly, and just to encourage more tourism, especially when we're in an economic slump and we may not see those same tourism numbers. If people are looking to spend their money wisely, they still want to come to a lovely bucolic community, but it should look like the municipality cares about welcoming those people in, not just the small businesses putting out the money to engage and encourage those tourists to come. It's not our so responsibility. So I've worked for municipalities across Alberta, Saskatchewan, even back in Ontario. And I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate with you here for a second, mm -hmm. because they will say they get requests from business owners, residents from across their communities, and they will only have a certain amount of money for each uh, year because they can't run deficits. Uh, while mm -hmm. there is money that they can apply for for the province and the federal government, sometimes they don't get it. Um, how do you battle back against the idea that we can't always get what we want when it comes to business economic development, because I can imagine because as someone who's worked in the marketing communications, economic development for a small town in Northern Alberta, when I was told you mm -hmm. support your local business, it's only to a point because businesses also have to go halfway as well. Right. Well, I mean, I think we've gone more than halfway. I mean, I would like to agree with you in your in your point, but I just don't think we've seen any of said money or encouragement yeah. even thrown our way. I feel like it's, I mean, I'll give some some credit to our tourism organization that I think they have applied for some funding, but I think that's more of a grander marketing scale as opposed to what is the, sorry, what is the municipality doing specifically? And quite frankly, Chris, it's not even necessarily about money. It's just, could you acknowledge what we are putting our own money into that is actually contributing to, you know, the, the municipality and, you know, 
give us a bit of a pat on the back. Instead, we're getting, you know, over-regulation. We're being, you know, talked about relatively negatively by some members members of council and sort of being kicked around. So I can't speak again for my fellow business owners, but as myself, it's not even necessarily that I want the money or want, you know, to participate in some of these programs, even though I know they exist. Could you please just acknowledge the intense amount of work that we've already done, the personal money that's gone into it? We are small business owners. We know it's our money. We know it's, you know, our responsibility to to an extent. But could you be a little bit more cooperative and, you know, just a bit more positive in the way that you talk about how we actually contribute as opposed to maligning us with, you know, we're the failure or the potential failure of this municipality and that there are other other uh, sectors that would be more um, that are being more encouraged to come there we're already here we're already doing the work we're already participating and we're you know we're taking it on the chin quite frankly sometimes but we're still doing it because we care about the community we care about the people that live there full-time and we care about the people that come up that show up enough money for us that we can continue to keep our staff employed throughout the colder months and continue to have money set aside for capital projects that help encourage more people to come, better our um, sort of the beautification of our area, everything like that. So, you know, I understand that there's not enough money to go around, but how about some pleasant congratulations or good job or thank you? And I think my little group, particularly in Wellington, we're not getting any of that. From Sometimes some, even sure, the rec- recognition the is those of far distance than even- 100%. Like, yeah. Just um, to feel like you've put all this money in and then you're being criticized for it. That's a tough one to take. So I want to, because I know you guys are both uh, busy right now and you're in the middle of transition from <laughs> one place to another. So I'm going to end on this question for you because I think this is the most important one. We are heading into tourism season. What can people expect when they go get, go down to Wellington to go to, and I'm going to try and pronounce the name of the restaurant again, and you're going to tell me I've pronounced it wrong. So I do apologize. Piccolinas. You got it. And you got it with the accent too. Good job. <laughs> My Italian husband will be very happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Uh, so what to expect? Okay, well, from our little shop, I mean, we've made a few little changes based on what we think might happen this summer. Um, so we're trying to make it slightly more affordable for people who are coming in, particularly families or larger groups. So we make a lot of products that are easy for you to just take home. So if you've got a rental or you're staying at an inn or you're staying with friends, you know, you can pick up a few things to go affordable, delicious, serve a lot of people. I mean, generally for us, you know, you come in and you want a little bit of an Italian experience, you know, classic Italian pastries, you know, espresso and cappuccino served properly. Uh, On Friday evenings, we do an aperitivo, extended hours. You can come and sit it on the patio. Um, But to make sure I recognize Wellington as a whole, there's a lot of wonderful restaurants doing amazing work, serving incredible food, morning, noon, and into the evening. Um, and there's this year sort of post COVID, a lot of our, um, community events are coming back like Canada day and things like that. So there'll be hopefully a more jovial atmosphere this year. Um, and you know, there's more people actually living in Wellington, more residents. So there's much more, you know, local people coming in and out every day. And I think that's always nice for tourists to see that they're not just the only ones coming in they can walk into a shop like mine and my lovely staff are talking to our regulars and other people that come in they're getting to witness the community at work as opposed to a community that only exists when tourism comes to it so my hope is that Wellington sees the blend of that and that tourists feel that they're at home there whether it's in a shop like mine or you know the restaurants down the street sitting on our patios enjoying our main street um, that they're a part of the community as opposed to just people that pop in, spend their money, and then carry on. And that the community also appreciates that we've made it adaptable for both the residents and the tourists. We value both. So we, we've compressed a lot here in the last 15 minutes, but where can people learn more about your restaurant? Where can people learn more about yourself? And is, is there any social medias that you have that you want to make sure that we share and we put in the show notes so people can just click and follow you? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm mostly on Instagram. So Picolino Mercado um, is on Instagram. So Picolino Mercado. Oh. 
Oh, spell it. Okay. So it's Oh, don't worry about word. Don't worry about spelling it it because it will be in the show notes. So just scroll down for those who are watching right now. Okay. So yeah, the, the cafe is Pico Inter Mercado. And then um, myself is um, Enid underscore Grace. And then everything cumulatively is at EnidGrace.com. Perfect. Enid, I want to thank you so much for doing this. This has been an honor to sit down with you and talk about tourism, but also talk about a little bit of my home uh, community of uh, Picton and Wellington, the Prince Edward County as a whole. So thank you so much. And like I said, when I'm back this summer, I will certainly stop in and I will sit down and grab an authentic Italian cafe. (laughs) Please do. I look forward to seeing you in person. We want to thank Enid so much for joining us and for being part of the cross-border interviews. Now, next Friday, we'll be sitting down with an Alberta-based small business, and we'll be talking about their tourism business. And to our viewers, thank you for tuning in for being part of this great conversation. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all our latest interviews, our special episodes, and this continuation of the special series on small businesses and the municipality. We have some amazing guests lined up and we can't wait to share their stories with you. Now, if you're able to, please consider backing the show to help us continue to grow and produce more quality content like you saw today. Every little bit helps, and we appreciate your support. A link to our support page on the Cross Border Interviews website is in the show notes. And finally, as much as we love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real-life, in-person conversations with the people in our lives, even if it's just for five minutes a day. Thank you so much for watching this special episode of the Cross Border Interviews. We'll see you next time. Until then, remember, just keep talking.